I'd like to invite to the stage Michael Stelzer, the uh, former chairperson for Democrats Abroad Berlin. He's going to make a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it, a PowerPoint presentation about this hat. He'll explain it all, 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 all to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Stelzer, please. Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, up front here, you see, you'll see a few uh, pictures. I first did this PowerPoint presentation for the Inauguration Day party of Democrats Abroad on the 21st of January, which was also Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It was a celebration. And I'm gonna take you through a little, through a little trip from, 19, from 1863 to 2013. And um, United States Senator Charles Schumer, he announced the presidential inaugural theme, Faith in America's Future. And what he did was also um, show that this inauguration day was 150 years of the Emancipation Proclamation. And it's also 150 years of the mounting of the Statue of Freedom on top of the Capitol of the United States of America. That's where the Parliament is. Now, this statue was designed by uh, an architect and also a artist named Mr. Crawford. He was uh, the one who designed it. And I think it's important to know about this little statue because you have to know where you come from if you know where you're going to go. The Statue of Freedom, who and what is that? Here you see a picture of three men, I think it was somewhere in the 1920s, up on top of the Capitol building and you see the head of the Statue of Freedom. And you see these plumes, you see this bird, you see these 13 stars, very patriotic. But it was not originally planned that way. It was supposed to be different. The Statue of Freedom was designed by Thomas Crawford. It was commissioned by President Franklin Pierce. And he had a guy who was the Minister of War. His name was Jefferson Davis. If any of you know American history, you will know that Jefferson Davis was the first president of the Confederacy of the Southern States. He was a slave owner from Mississippi. So he did not like the first plan that was made for the Statue of Freedom. Here you see some more pictures. The Statue of Freedom was also known as Armed Freedom. She has a sword. She's supposed to defend the United States. This is the original plan of the Capitol. It was built at that time. And way on top of this dome, which was supposed to represent the planet Earth, is the Statue of Freedom. So it is the highest point in the city of Washington, DC. And here, if you look carefully, it was the original design of the Statue of Freedom. She had a, F a Phrygian cap, so-called Liberty Cap, on her head. And when Jefferson Davis saw that, he said, there is no way that this hat is going to stay there because this hat was a symbol of manumission, a symbol of freed slaves in Rome. It came from Phrygia, from a part of Turkey. And this hat, he said, no way will a hat of a freed slave be on top of the Capitol building. So he refused to have that and had it changed. I'll show you what this hat looks like. I've got one myself here. You might recognize it. It looks like a schlumpf hat, doesn't it? Sort of. Let's continue. The Phrygian hat is a symbol of freed slaves. It was a symbol of liberty during the French Revolution. And it's a symbol of the crest of the United States Senate. It's a symbol in the crest of the United States Army. It's a symbol in the crest of Cuba. And it's known as a symbol of liberty and freedom. But Jefferson Davis didn't want to have that on top of the building. Here you see, uh, well, it's a little bit difficult. This is a French 
hat that was worn during the French Revolution by the revolutionaries. Here you see some Americana, young uh, Uncle Sam with his girlfriend wearing a Phrygian cap, a sculpture from Rome. Here is the official seal of the state of Iowa. Maybe you will see the Phrygian cap in that logo on top of the American flag. Here is the official seal of the United States Senate with the Phrygian cap. Here is the official seal of Cuba. Here is the official seal of the United States Army. So Jefferson Davis removed it. And as a slaveholder, of course, he does not want that symbol on top of the Capitol. The artist Crawford, he had to change the hat of the Statue of Freedom. So this is what it looks like, a Roman type hat with 13 stars, an eagle with 13 feathers, symbolizing the 13 original states. So it was built by slaves. It was designed to be a free slave. She was an African American, she still is up there, and now has the feathers of an American Indian. So my thoughts on that, 150 years later we have an African-American as president of the United States in spite of Jefferson Davis. Our freedom is so armed that we are destroying the basis of our future existence. And the decision of a racist slave owner is still at the highest point of our capital. So we are still a long way away from a post-racial society, as some people might think. So those are my thoughts to this hat. I'd like to continue with a short anecdote, a little story, as many of you might know. Oh, if you're interested, here are some sources. Give me your email address and I'll be glad to send you the, uh, well, what's here, but let's go on a little bit further. In 1964, Martin Luther King Jr. visited Berlin upon invitation of the mayor, Willy Brandt. Very few people know that. He came here and he visited the city. It was divided at the time. Here's a picture of him at Bernauer Straße. I'm kind of proud to see my father showing him what the city was about here. He spoke in West and East Berlin. Willy Brandt invited him. He witnessed the rescue of a, an Amer of a uh, East German who f jumped into the Spray River and was shot at by the East German border guards. And um, so during that time when he was here, he went there and he saw the rescue mission. There was an American soldier who jumped into the Spray to rescue this guy. He spoke at the Rathaus Schöneberg and then he went to the Waldbühne and spoke to 20,000 people there. Later, during the day, he visited Bernauer Straße, and then he went to East Berlin. But there was a problem because the American officials did not want him to go to East Berlin. They were afraid something might happen to him. So they took his passport away. But Martin Luther King was kind of smart, so he took the official limousine which the city of Berlin had given him, and he drove to Checkpoint Charlie got through on the western side, of course, because the Americans let him through, but on the East German side, he had to show his passport, but he didn't have his passport. So what did he do? He pulled out his American Express card to identify himself, and the East German border guard said, well, you can, you can go through. And he spoke at a church in East Berlin, and he told everyone, here on either side of the wall are God's children, <coughs> And no man-made barrier can obliterate that fact. So he was speaking for the unity of our people here and everywhere. Here is a plaque which reminds us of his visit in Berlin. It's very close to the Friedrichstrasse. It's at a, uh, a hotel which is now there. It used to be 
a hospice. And uh, so you can see Martin Luther King Jr.'s signature out on the front of that hospital. He spoke to a number of people. And um, actually, his father, who was also called Martin Luther King, was also in Berlin about 40 years earlier, spoke at, spoke at the Sportpalast. So don't forget, it's Martin Luther King Jr. So 44 years later, the 44th president, Martin Luther King, was here in 1964. And the 44th president was in 2008. You subtract the one from the other, you have 44. So Barack Obama visited us here in Berlin, and he, as you know, became the 44th president. So some thoughts. Why didn't Barack Obama mention Martin Luther King when he came and spoke to us in Berlin on July 24th in 2008? He mentioned Kennedy and Reagan, which is spelled wrong up here, excuse me. Is Barack Obama really fulfilling the legacy of Martin Luther King? A question we should all ask. And is Martin Luther King's sermon one year before his assassination a time to break silence, which linked poverty with war, also relevant today? So thoughts to continue about Martin Luther King and what he means. His fight is not over. Thank you.